Welcome to Basketball U. If you're new to Basketball U, make sure you slam dunk that subscribe button. And just to make sure you don't miss a thing, make sure you tap that notification bell right after you hit that subscribe button. What's up, Basketball U? Welcome back. It's good to see you have graced our presence once again to learn more about some of the stars of yesterday that helped build the league into what it is today. Hit that thumbs up button and keep the momentum of great storytelling rolling. The path that Les have taken always seems like a scary one before heading down the road of the unknown. That's what most players like the one we're going to talk about did as he decided to make the jump from high school straight to the NBA. His name doesn't ring bells when you say it to the new generation. And many probably didn't realize he came out of high school because he gradually came into his own when gracing the league with his athleticism and ability to score the basketball. He was Mr. Basketball in Texas, McDonald's All-American, the National Player of the Year in high school, a two-time NBA All-Star, and let's not forget, an NBA champion. Basketball, you family. We present to you Rashard Lewis. Lewis was born on August 8, 1979 in Pineville, Louisiana. He played high school at Elif Elsick in Houston, Texas. Despite being recruited by Florida State, Kansas, and Houston, Lewis bypassed college and opted for the 1998 NBA Draft, where he was selected by the Seattle Supersonics with the 32nd overall pick. At the time of his selection, he was the last player remaining in the green room where 15 of the top draft prospects sit until their selection. He and teammate Ray Allen made Seattle a contender during the early 2000s. Anytime a high school player is making the jump to the league, there is always a bit of a struggle with learning curve and most guys don't see superstar minutes right away. In Richard's first season, he saw roughly eight minutes a game, which didn't allow him to show his ability as a phenomenal athlete he was. As Lewis's minutes increased, so did his production. As each season, he improved, and so did the Seattle Supersonics' success. The Supersonics made the playoffs three out of the nine seasons in a Western Conference that was dominated by the extraordinary Lakers teams in the early 2000s, and a San Antonio Spurs team who won two championships in 2003 and 2005. Seattle found themselves with early exits out of the playoffs, which a few came to those championship spurs. Richard put on solid performances in each of those playoff appearances, as he averaged around 15 points a game in the three seasons that he played. In 2000, he averaged 15.4 points within five games. In 2002, he averaged 12.7 points in three games. In 2005, he averaged 16.9 points in eight games. In 2001, Lewis was selected to play for the United States basketball team in the Goodwill Games, in which they won the gold medal. A quick career highlight before we move on through Richard Lewis's career. On October 31st, 2003, Lewis scored a career high 50 points to lead the Seattle Supersonics to a 124-105 win over the Los Angeles Clippers to close out a two-game series in Saitama, Japan. Lewis was named an All-Star in 2004-05 season. Lewis holds the Supersonics' record for most three-pointers made, having passed Dale Ellis for second place on November 22, 2005, and Gary Payton for first place on March 13, 2007 when Lewis made his 918th three-pointer in a game against the Detroit Pistons. After playing his first nine seasons for the Seattle Supersonics, Lewis joined the Orlando Magic in July 2007 as he agreed to a six-year signing trade deal worth $118 million. In his first season with the Magic, Lewis was moved from his usual small forward position to power forward. 
That year, he made 53 more three-pointers than his previous single-season record, which was 173 in 2004-05 season. During the playoffs, the Magic reached the second round, with Lewis contributing a 33-point performance against the Detroit Pistons in Orlando's only win of the series. Lewis was the Magic's top scorer in the playoffs and set personal records in points, rebounds, and assists. Lewis averaged 19 points and 7 rebounds. The Magic squad looked promising, even in their loss to the Pistons. Next season, Lewis started the 2008-09 season as the team's second leading scorer, earning an appearance in the 2009 NBA All-Star Game. In the 2009 playoffs, Lewis hit a game-winning shot in the first game of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Cleveland Cavaliers, what he called the biggest shot of his career. This is a Cleveland Cavaliers team who is two years removed from getting swept in the NBA Finals and also losing to the championship Celtics in the Eastern Conference the year before. They were led by the infamous LeBron James, who also hit a game-winning shot in Game 2 of the series. But the Magic won the series and advanced to the NBA Finals, where they were defeated by the Los Angeles Lakers in five games. The Lakers were the runner-ups from last year's Finals and were led by a determined Hall of Famer, Kobe Bryant. What a road to try and win a championship, having to beat the two best players in the league at the time. Richard Lewis averaged 17 points during his efforts to beat the Lakers in the 2009 Finals. On August 6, 2009, Lewis was suspended without pay for the first 10 games of the 2009-10 season after testing positive for a banned substance. After the situation, for some reason, Richard's game took a hit as he wasn't giving out the same production. On December 18, 2010, Lewis was traded to the Washington Wizards in exchange for Gilbert Arenas. Only starting 27 games in his first season with the Wizards, he saw a significant amount of minutes but he was playing a backup role to some young upcoming stars in the league. John Wall, Nick Young, Andre Blatch. In 60 games for the Wizards over two seasons, Lewis averaged 9.7 points, 4.9 rebounds, and 1.5 assists per game. Richard Lewis didn't see the same success with his young team, and they didn't see the playoffs either. In light of their struggles, on June 20th, 2012, Lewis was traded, along with the 46th pick in the 2012 NBA Draft to the New Orleans Hornets in exchange for Trevor Ariza and Amika Okafor. On June 30th, 2012, the Hornets agreed to buy out terms with Lewis and waived him. On July 11, 2012, Lewis signed a two-year deal with the Miami Heat. He now joined what we know as one of the greatest teams assembled as LeBron, D. Wade and Chris Bosh join forces, not to mention reuniting with his former teammate in Seattle, Ray Allen. If you can't beat him, join him. The Heat finished the 2012-13 season with a league-best 66-win, 16-loss record. Ironically, the team that Lewis continued to lose to in the playoffs ended up being a nemesis for LeBron as well. Lewis won his first NBA championship with the Heat's final series victory over the San Antonio Spurs. In a limited role, but understanding what his contribution was to the team, a lesson that can be taught here is even though your success early in your career may be scoring, you can always contribute other ways to your team and it doesn't always have to show up in the box score. Let's not forget that Richard Lewis was 6 foot 11 and was still able to move and play on the wing. So with that ability, Richard Lewis was there to do what was needed when his number was called, and he played a pivotal role in getting back to the NBA championship for the third time in 2014. Lewis earned rare reviews from Heat coach Eric Spolstra for the way he defended in game three in the 2014 Eastern Conference Finals against the Indiana Pacers. Even though he finished without a single point rebound, assist, or steal. Lewis worked his way into the starting lineup during the series, earning notoriety for helping the team despite a lack of impressive box score statistics in games three and four. In game five of the series, Lewis started again and scored 18 points on six of nine shooting from behind the three-point line. In game six, Lewis started and scored 13 points as the Heat advanced to the NBA Finals. The Heat went on to lose the Finals to the San Antonio Spurs in five games. 
on July 19th, 2014, Lewis signed with the Dallas Mavericks. However, just four days later, his contract was voided by the Mavericks after he failed his physical and when it discovered that his right knee required surgery. Rashard Lewis is another example of the generation of basketball players who decided to bet on themselves and take a risk. In doing that, he earned himself over $130 million in contract money and made an impact on the league with some unforgettable moments. Coming out of high school to the pros is harder than you can imagine, and Richard earned everything he worked for and understood the career highs and the career lows and handled them like a true professional. Thank you, Mr. Lewis, for showing us how to understand our role. This is Basketball You. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, follow all of our social medias right there in the description to keep yourself up to date as this channel will have a lot of basketball, a lot of players, and a lot of training, and more information on how to play the game of basketball. Remember, someone's always working. Are you? You? You?